Hello and welcome to episode, what is this now? This is episode six and this song that I'm going to be doing is called 10%. I wrote it maybe, I feel like I wrote it last year. I wrote it a while ago. I've played it a bunch of times in the, in the Twitch bar. So it's, it's in my head. I know how it all goes. So first things first, as always, I'm just going to play it to a click track and then we'll start building it up. So I recorded that rough take uh, to a 118 BPM click track. It didn't, it sounded, when I went through to like kind of start tweaking it and doing stuff to it, it felt a little bit slow. So I re-recorded it again and it's now 121 BPM, which sounds just about right. I already did like a little bit of work on the drums beforehand, which I'll show you now actually. Let me just, we'll switch to the screen. Here we are on the screen. Right. So here's my rough take here, which I re-recorded. Where are we? Rough sketch. And it sounds a bit quicker now. Sounds like that. I already had to do a little bit of rough work on the drums before I did it, because it didn't kind of, normally I'd just have a 4-4, four, four, like a kick and snare in an obvious place to kind of play to. But this one I kind of needed to do a little bit of tweaking before I played it because of the rhythm of the guitar. It's not that much of a big thing, but I've uh, had to tweak it ever so slightly to play the rough take of it. And then the other thing I've done, I've, I've still only got the rough take on here, but I, in my head, I had this idea for this uh, melody over the top that would go And to make sure that that went with everything else, before I got too far with everything else, I kind of put that melody in there. So I've played it on a few different instruments. I've played it on piano, viola and cello to try and figure out how that bit goes. And then my idea is to then place that where it will sit in the track before building the track up so that I know that the other stuff that I play will go with those bits. It's, it feels a bit awkward, this one. Right. Let me show you. So that's the rough sketch. So I've got that bit, the piano doing that melody. I've also done the melody on viola and cello, just to kind of... I'm not sure, I'm still, I'm really off, I'm kind of figuring this out as I go along. Obviously it's all what I'm always doing, but this time it's kind of, I'm not a hundred percent sure where this is going to end up. Like if I'm going to change that or not, I'm not a hundred percent convinced of that melody yet, but I kind of want the melody there. So that when I start putting the bass, which I've already started playing around with, the bass is here. I haven't figured this out exactly yet, but I'm trying to figure that out before I do a full take. the 
bass might follow this melody as well. Uh, other than that, I've kind of, I've got, I know what the structure of the song is. I've kind of figured that out. It's, that's all, that's all chopped up and done. The chords are slightly weird because I'm essentially playing, even though I've got a capo on, I'm playing a C shape for the verse and I'm just adding one finger, which I'm taking on and off, which I kind of, it almost, it's like a C shape, but with one finger going on and off the chord, like, I'll show you, like this. It's basically the core, uh, the um, verse is just, it's that chord, and then I'm putting one extra finger on. And I kind of had to look that up to know what that chord was. There's websites you can go to that, to do reverse chord lookups, because I kind of want to know roughly what that is for the for doing the bass and the other parts and then the the a minor is from the is the other chord where i'm just taking one finger on and off so really it's it's not c it's whatever that is what did i write it down as so let's have a look at the document and i'll show you exactly what i mean so you can hear see here on my so this is why it's useful if you're a musical Luddite like myself, to write all this stuff down. Actual chords, I've got my lyrics and chords for 10%. I'm using a capo on it, which means it's not a C, it's a C shape, but the actual chords are F and D, but it's that F played with an extra, with an extra finger going on and off it, and the same with the, the D. Uh, so I might just play the bass well, I am playing the bass at the moment, just using my ear just to hear what sounds right. But yeah, I'm not 100% sure where I'm going with this at the moment and I'm figuring it out as I go along. So that's where I am now. I'll come back to you when I know what I'm doing. Right, it's a day later. I kind of know what I'm doing now. The bass isn't going to follow that melody and I might even get rid of that melody completely or just rewrite that little melody riff thing that I had and I don't know what instrument it's going to be on but there's going to be something but for the time being the overall um, foundation of the song I've now got this bass riff for it that goes like that so I'm going to record that now it's basically what is it I don't know his fingers on strings, and I'm twanging them. Right, let's do this. nearly eight days since I started this song now it's getting to the point where it's quite hard to hear it because I've heard the same how long is it now what's the duration of this it is uh, 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 approximately just over three minutes I've been listening to the same three minutes over and over again I've deleted the drums recreated the drums added over drums taken taken over dubs off again uh, I've sung it a whole bunch of times I am now going to, I've obviously not recorded all of this stuff because I've just been in my own head trying to figure this stuff out and it's probably would be quite boring to, to film most of what I've been doing. And also it's just, obviously it's going to impede me time-wise doing the filming and this at the same time. So what I'm going to do now, at the stage where I've done a load of vocal takes, I'm going to do one more vocal take so I've got enough to try and comp that together to make a vocal take that I'm kind of happy with enough of the demo. And then I think I've got the structure there and everything else ready to take it to the to the studio to as a to start as a starting piece. I know where everything sits. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna do a couple more vocal takes, and then after that, I will uh, show you the screen. I'll, sh I'll take you through what I've done and how it's transformed from a song into a song with stuff all over it. 
So you can have it all if you want. I'm getting that quite a lot recently as well. I'm getting a lot of audio dropouts because my computer's about 10 years old. It's fine most of the time for doing Cubase, which is the most probably the most intensive thing I do on this computer is a little bit of Cubase and a little bit of video editing now and again. And it's normally fine for all of that, but because this project, particular one, I think I've added quite a lot of tracks, it's starting to get the odd drop out here and there. I've ordered some more RAM. Okay, let's take a look at the screen. I'll show you some of the overdubs and things that I've done after creating and deleting lots of bits and pieces for not eight continuous days, just as and when I could find time to do this, but it has been, I spent quite a lot of time on this demo. Uh, which doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be good, but I've put in the hours. So what we've got here is I've added, I really like the bass line, but, and beforehand I was going to have the intro was going to be uh, this string thing that I'd written, and I've completely been that off. And then I really like, because I didn't have it when I first wrote it, this bass part, and I really like the bass line, and I kind of wanted to that bring that kind of front and foremost. Let me show you the bass line. So I wanted to start with that. So the bass line plays on its own and then there's a little fill and then everything comes in. But I kind of also liked, there's a song called Star Me Kitten by R.E.M. on the album Automatic for the People where they use these synth vocals, and we use synth vocals as well on the last album, so it's not completely out of the question to use them. They're on Refuse Trucks in Films. Oh, we had some really cool ones. But I found some <clears throat> uh, in Cubase, and I liked them, and I kind of did this layered thing with R's, synthetic R's, which sound like this. <gasps> After a bit of tweaking, and both together, I quite like the sound of them both together. It sounds like this. Uh, the other thing that I liked, uh, I was messing around with, was I didn't want too much going on because I, again, I wanted to keep the the bass line is the is the main melody, but just little something really subtle. So I went with pizzicata, if that's pronounced correctly, which is just the plucking of string instruments. I don't know which, which string instruments that you pluck, but it could be violins, I think it's cello, I don't know. Just, which probably means anything. Pizzicatus is probably just means plucking, but it's just Latin for pluck or something, isn't it? Anyway, pizzicata sounds like this. So very, very subtle. So when it kicks in, that every now and again, this, you get the odd pluck. Let me show you all together. Vocal wise, I'm still tweaking that a little bit, but I kind of wanted it to be kind of almost lost in the, not up front so much, kind of maybe in the in the mid range, kind of just, it's kind of, it's subtle and it's kind of, it blends with everything else, like a, like I guess, like a wall of sound type thing. And making it kind of like dreamlike is my thought process for 10%. And then there is some string stuff it's, uh, that then the strings do kick in on the chorus. So the, so the strings will, well, actually will come, in, will come in there. So I've written a couple of bits, some cello and viola. Very, very simple with the odd little bit. I didn't want it to be too much melody coming out of those because I wanted the melody again to come out of the bass. So I've got that there, uh, and I'll get that replayed. If that makes the final cut, then I'll get that redone properly. 
I'll get someone to play that on real cello and real viola in the finished thing. And then when we come into the second verse, I drop out the drums. I did it by mistake at first. I kind of hadn't put the drums in. I quite liked it when it kind of, it dropped out. So I kind of left it dropped out and put the R's back in again. So the R's kind of fall out for the first verse and then you get the chorus and then I'm bringing them back in on the second verse and it kind of, you get a quiet. Is that drop out again? Let me play that again, with, see if I can play it without it dropping. I've got no, uh, oh, I should have turned that down. Uh, so then we've got the middle eight, the middle drums. I probably did the most amount of tweaking and in the end just reused the chorus drums because I kind of, I thought I could maybe do something just where it just goes to toms for a bit and it never sounded quite right. So I reverted back to what it was originally. I'm not really gonna do that much. <laughs> Not 100% sure on the overdubs for this, but I can figure that out after the studio if I'm going to add anything else there. Uh, and then you've got a final verse, a final chorus, and it just fades out. I'm going to do some very final quick tweaks to that, and then that's it, that's done. I am going to move on to something else otherwise this entire album is just going to be 10 percent and if you'd like to hear the finished version of this demo or any of the other demos in these videos then you can hear them on the patreon you can join that for as little as two dollars a month and all the money that i get from the patreon just gets used for the creation of this album and other albums